Can you just give me your name and spell it? Uh, Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, Burton, B-U-R-T-O-N. And you are the? Director of the Wood County Board of Elections. Okay, so first, I guess, ballot drop box. Um, I understand you guys are trying to get a bigger one. Um, talk to me a little bit about the challenges that you guys have seen so far. Uh, we wanted a bigger drop box um, just to uh, take care of the volume. Um, we've uh, had this drop box for about 10 years, and uh, it's worked fine, and it worked fine in the primary. Uh, but obviously a lot more people are utilizing that as an option, and so we decided to go ahead and uh, get, get something a little bigger, uh, make it a little easier for our staff to get into and uh, make sure it's uh, ready to go for voters. Okay, so is it coming? Is it going to come here? Uh, yeah, we're hoping to have it installed and ready to go uh, before the October 6th uh, start of the uh, ballots being mailed out, Okay. and so that's our goal. Gotcha. Have you been seeing a lot of people um, you know, requesting absentee ballots so far and whatnot? Yeah, we have uh, about uh, 19,500 absentee requests in for mail. Um, that is uh, significantly higher than we had uh, in 2016, but we were prepared for that. We knew that was coming. Um, so we uh, have pretty much caught up on entering those into our system, and we're looking forward and ready to go for October 6th. Gotcha. Now I know there's some a little bit of drama going on with ballot drop boxes throughout the state. Um, if you guys are allowed to, you know, put out more ballot boxes, will you guys do that? Um, it's going to be determined by when the, the court makes the decision. Um, being able to uh, get a supply of. Uh, drop boxes. I know that uh, a lot of states are in the process of doing that and then also finding locations that meet all the security criteria. Um, here our drop box here is under 24-hour surveillance um, through cameras as well as our court security office and so there, there are certain stipulations that would come into play if we were to, to, to deploy more drop boxes and so we would have to work through those hurdles um, and if it, if it was feasible, obviously we would uh, do our best to serve our voters. Okay, um, speaking of security, I guess, you know, I have a couple of the questions that I sent you over. Um, talk a little bit about um, the, you know, the security that is there on voting day um, to just, you know, for voters to feel safe and then um, the security measures you guys use to protect against voter fraud. Well, obviously two different questions there. Um, at the polls on election day, um, really, our poll workers uh, make sure that everything is, is secured. When things are dropped off, they're uh, secured by the locations, and then the poll workers make sure that they have things set up. They verify that uh, all the machines have zero votes on them before the start of the day, and they sign off on that. Um, they watch over the machines through the day, and uh, once again, um, it's, a, it's a busy place on Election Day, and so they uh, monitor you know, people if they're obviously touching parts of the machine they shouldn't, et cetera, et cetera. But that's really not been a problem. Um, obviously, we just are trying to move voters through on Election Day. Um, here at our office, as far as um, security, um, when, when voters are turning in their applications, they have certain ID uh, provisions and, and birth date and, and other identifiers that our staff goes through and make sure are all there and match what we have in our system to verify that it's the person coming um, and the person that requested it. Uh, they check their signature, make sure it's reasonably close to what we have on file. Obviously, no one signs the exact same way two times in a row. Um, but uh, then that's checked both at the application process and at the ballot process. So when they return their ballot, we, we check those same things on those ID envelopes coming back. Uh, the ballots are kept in a locked room here at our office um, that has uh, security as far as uh, double lock and key to make sure that uh, people uh, that enter the room uh, always have a partner. We, we like to say we're a Noah's Ark office, half Republican, half Democrat. And so we do all our jobs that way and make sure that we're verifying that, uh, that everything's safe and secure throughout the process. Okay. Um, how will you guys be reporting results on election night? And I guess with the number you know, of people voting absentee, um, when will, I guess, do you expect those final results, I guess, to be counted? Well, one of the common misconceptions out there is that we don't count absentees un until uh, it's close or something like that. Uh, absentee results and early vote results are actually in our first release. So at 745, when our first numbers come out, those are going to be those mail-in ballots as well as our early vote ballots here at the uh, courthouse. And so those will be reflected right up front. Uh, then we have to wait for the precincts to come in from their locations. 
Um, typically, uh, we'll have all our precincts in, uh, I would guess by maybe 9.30, sometimes 10 o'clock if there's any lines out there at 7.30. Um, once we get all those in, uh, we would hope to have final results somewhere between 11 and 11.30. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. I guess for first-time voters, first-time first, first -time voters coming to the polls, you know, they want to make sure they dot all their I's and cross their T's. What are the top three things they should know going into this election? Well, the first thing that we want first-time voters to know is there's three options to vote. They can vote by mail, they can vote here at the courthouse early in the 30 days prior, or they can go to the polls on election day. Um, if they do go to the polls on election day, uh, a couple hints. One, um, make sure they bring their ID. Uh, they either need a driver's license, state ID, or a utility bill. And there's also some other options that they can find on our website for ID. Uh, the other thing that I would have uh, liked to have known as a first-time voter is uh, if they can, probably avoid the first thing in the morning. Uh, probably our longest lines are first thing in the morning. So if you have the opportunity to vote later in the day, probably would be a, the best option to avoid uh, some of the lines. Wow, okay, that's good to know. I know we've talked about this, um, but I'm sure you guys still see it. What are the big mistakes people make when they're filling out their mail-in ballots or absentee requests? Sure, uh, the, the mistakes tend to be the same, both on their applications and their ballots coming back. Uh, things that they miss are, are birth date, uh, their ID information, uh, or signing. Uh, those are the top three. Um, and, uh, and once again, is if they just carefully go through and fill in all their blanks, um, they'll, they'll get through a fight. If they do miss something, we send a follow-up letter, and as long as they provide that on the follow-up letter, then those uh, applications and those ballots will continue to move through the process. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. What role will poll watchers have on this election night? On election night, um, really the, the poll watchers here, here at our office, um, they just watch the process. They, they really don't have an exact role. Uh, by the time it gets to the uh, evening counting, um, we move through that pretty quickly. They have the ability to watch uh, as our uh, electronic cards come in and uh, obviously whatever paper ballots are there. Um, but pretty much they're, they're just there just to make sure the process runs smoothly. Okay. Um, this is still going through all these. If people like come to their polling locations and later on they have like some concern or complaint, um, how do they go about filing that? Who do they contact? Well, the first thing that they should do is if they have any concern in their voting process is to stop. Don't finish the process. Stop where you are and get a, a precinct elections official because that's the opportunity that most problems can be solved at. At the point that they cast a ballot and move on from that, um, if they had a concern about their ballot, it's it's pretty much too late at that point to fix anything that they might have had a concern about. Um, however, if they see something that does concern them, uh, they can and they've already left the polls, they can call our office, and uh, our staff will be happy to talk to them, or they can contact the Secretary of State's office. Okay. Can people wear campaign shirts or buttons or whatever um, when they go to vote? The uh, polling place is considered neutral. There's not electioneering inside 100 feet. Um, the flags typically try to denote the 100 feet. Some places that's not feasible, so uh, the poll workers a lot of times will put chalk marks out where 100 feet is. Once you're inside that, if you're coming to vote, you really should not be wearing any sort of political uh, campaign materials. Um, if you have a button on, they'll ask you to remove it. If you have a t-shirt on, they'll ask you to turn it inside out. Um, and, and basically try to keep the polling place neutral. And I guess uh, talk about the importance of that and why that is. Yeah, I mean, once again, uh, everybody uh, obviously has very strong political feelings, and that's been true for every election uh, that we've had. Um, but once we get to the polling place, uh, that's the time for everybody to make their own choice. And so the state legislator has said that, you know, that the polling place is neutral, and we're going to keep it that way. Okay. Um, do, 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 move in. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Anything else that you guys have been seeing over the past couple of weeks that you want us to know about or tell people about? Now, I, probably the, the biggest concern people have is so many people got their absentee applications in early and they're wondering why they don't have a ballot yet. And so we're trying to stress to voters that all those ballots cannot legally be mailed out until October 6th. So while they have their applications in and they continue to get more applications from the different parties and interest groups, um, really there's no way for us to stop those applications to them and once they're in the system once, that's sufficient to get them a ballot. Can people, I forgot this one, this is a new one we got this morning, can you change your vote? once If you vote by mail, how do you change that? 
can you and how do you? Uh, no, o Ohio does not allow for changing your vote. Uh, there have been many people asking about uh, asking for a mail-in ballot and then uh, either going to the polls or coming here for early voting. You really need to pick one method to vote. Um, and once you do that, it's best to stick with it. If you do come after you've requested a mail ballot and come to the courthouse or go to your polls on election day, then you're going to have to vote a provisional ballot. And, and that ballot only gets counted if your mail-in ballot isn't submitted. So it's really not a way to change your vote, it's just a way to ensure that you get your vote. Okay, so if someone votes by mail and they mail it off and they want to change it, they can't do that? Well, they would vote provisionally, but if their, if their mail-in ballot was already accepted, then their provisional ballot would not be counted. Okay, gotcha.